The Angel of History In the Parliament House on Kildare Street, the lamps were burning. It was a winter night, the usual slant rain falling. I had paused to light up a cigarette, to watch the lone guard stamp her feet, blow uselessly into her cupped, gloved hands. In the colonnade of the National Library, a man was standing, a man neither old nor young, his head bare, half turned towards the lights in the Parliament House, the high blank windows. I saw him reach inside his long, loose coat, take out a notebook. I crossed the road, gathering my own long coat around me, stood in behind him, looked over his shoulder. He paid me no heed. One after another, I saw him strike them out from a long list of names, senators, deputies, ministers. One after another, the names dissolved on the page, a scant dozen remaining. I watched him ink in a question mark after each of these, neat and precise. He put the book away, sliding it down carefully into a deep pocket. He turned and looked at me, nothing like pity in those hollow eyes. He sighed, then squared his shoulders, lifted his face to the rain and was gone. Gone as if he had never been. But I saw him. I know who he was. I witnessed that cold, exact cancellation. Walked on, walked home, thoughtful, afraid for my country. A Woman in Winter She walks the ditch, contented and alone, sends up a flight of crows with every stone. Beyond the ridge, beyond the frost-gripped fence, the light pours down on lands of innocence. A tree stands out against the winter snow, a tree her mother planted years ago. The sun flares up and shines through bitter cold on sudden flashing ornaments of gold. Travelling Soul Sutra for Dave Caffrey The wind is in from the Atlantic. Oh, do not close the window. Let the night beat salt into the room. Let the travelling soul find rest. The wind is in from the southwest, from a small graveyard at the sea's edge, where our friend lies with the long grass under a faint haze of stars. I hear the sea's long thunder across the bar, I hear the rain come sweeping down the hill, his voice at the window like a dipping turn, calling at night from far out at sea. Oh, hold the window open, love, for me, when the time comes, when the wind comes. Let the night beat salt into the room, let the travelling soul find rest. The wind is in from the southwest. And Dave is lying on the gravel earth and roots, who was a friend to learning and a good man. His bones are settled now. His soul is travelling on. This is the second section of a three-part poem called Walls of Green Water. This section deals with the death of my great-grandmother in childbirth off Cape Horn. She died in childbirth off Cape Horn, great-grandmother, Died on a black ship heading home, the deck plunging and rising, the air down below, fetid and chill. Salt everywhere, sweat in her hair and eyes, her breath faltering, falling still. There at the end of the world, her house of memory caving in, in lamplight maybe, or in weak daylight failing, the cold, it would have been cold, her fear for the child, the ebb in her blood, her last thought and nurse for the child. The board on the lee rail, her body on it, wrapped in old canvas, lead weights at her feet. Good men to shoulder the board, the captain intoning the service, his words on the wind. If it were me, I'd have done it at night under the southern cross. Wait till the after deck tips to the scudding clouds, then a nod, a sharp tilt and she's over, she slides in, and then it's down, down, down forever into the green dark. 
the book snapped shut. A drink for the men. Everything squared away. The Shelf I level the brackets, the cast iron birds you brought from New York, then balance the board on upturned palms, set the shelf in place. Clean timber, resiny, straight in the grain, clear sawn, smooth planed. It sits in the alcove, it floats, head height in the white kitchen. I treat myself to a full pot of tea, pull out a chair and sit there at the exact centre of the world, feeling the weight of time in space, the clean, sweet curve it takes towards the moment you walk in the door, nursing my satisfaction, savouring the pleasure you take in simple things like me. Watercolour I watch as you work the colour on soft paper, watch as the wind and water come and go, eddying and gusting between mind and hand as forms float in. Your eye follows the brush, wash after wash the shifting sway of thought, wash after wash the sound of thought in silence until something comes clear and you stand back, surprised and not mistaken. Now you found it, what you'd already guessed was already there. So with our lives, the colour sifts through wind and water as we walk the burrow beach, hung on the air for us, blessed and unsurprised at what we find there always, that quiet weight of breath and gesture, the shifting sway of thought, the brush stroke of whatever makes our world. My life has been all colour since that day you wrote your address for me on soft paper, the shape of our promised future already clear. I'm very honoured by this award. I'm very honoured that three people for whom I have such respect and thought well of the book. Uh, it was an honour indeed to be on the shortlist um, to be listed um, alongside poets for whom I have a huge respect. Um, I'm grateful to Daedalus Press for the faith they put in the book and for the meticulous way they have produced it and supported the title. I think it's an award as much to the press as to me. Um, Dunleary Rathdown and Poetry Now have been stalwarts for poetry in our time. And so too has the Irish Times, uh, which has been for 10 years now stood firmly behind this award. Um, words matter. Words matter more than ever now. And their commitment, the commitment of all those involved to this award is a way of signalling that without meticulous and careful attention to words, we're in serious trouble. I hope. I hope that some people may find that these words contribute to a better understanding of who and where and what we are. Thank you. Thank you.